Hi there. Hi. Just been um, uh, returned back to looking at this uh, seemingly insurmountable problem of mine. A problem I invented for myself, admittedly. Uh, and that has to do with all of these <clears throat> DVD discs that I have uh, downloaded from the internet. All um, having to do with this uh, pianist, Glenn Gould, and um, it's the complete, apparently, the complete collection of all recordings of him that appeared on the uh, CBC Canadian Broadcasting Corporation's uh, channel. And they've been compiled into these discs. Uh, not formatted. Let's get rid of this, this sort of thing because I know now that uh, although the, the method that I explained last time <clears throat> is very close to being correct. It's not exactly right. And what happened? There are two problems. One is that it's not exactly right. And so uh, some some fuzziness and um, some uh, you know, things that aren't clear appear on the video and um, also the sound was getting out of sync now what I was doing I don't know if you, you see these video TS directories right actually uh, <clears throat> represent a a type of file system. There's a there's a file system that is um, uh, represented by this collection of files, uh, <clears throat> and uh, to in order to turn this into something that looks like a file system, uh, you have to look into these special files. Um, now I was wondering why, why when I I would encode them to ABI files? Do I have some more? I would encode these things to ABI files like this and play the files individually, and no problem. But when I tried to glue them together, there would be uh, time synchronization problems, uh, especially near the end. But it didn't seem to be a, a linear thing because, you know, I would fix one part and uh, let's say about halfway through and if, if it was a linear thing then you would think that fixing <coughs> fixing the problem at the midway point should make both halves, you know, equally off or on time, and it didn't. The, the rest was still way off time for number nine. I think I deleted it finally. My time way off everywhere. Uh, yeah, I can just do it. well. I'm going to keep this as a reference because I want to see when I do it correctly uh, if. Uh, for this one, if if the image uh, improves, I know that I know how to how to tackle the sound problem now. What I did was I uh, went online because I had a hunch, I had a theory. In these video TS directories, I lost it now. Some movies. Okay. There's always there, there are all these VOB files. Now VOB I assume stands for video something, right? And they are. They have the video data in them. And um, but sometimes you see these ones like this one. Well, this might have an image on it. I don't know. Make it bigger. 
it looks black. And the length of time is zero. But in fact, it's not zero exactly. I think it's 400 milliseconds. Four hundred milliseconds. Now, why is there a blank video that's four hundred milliseconds long? Right, and then up here, there's always this one, this dud one ha ha has the number two tied with it, and uh, there's another one here that has a number one with it, but it's got maybe a menu. But then there's this third one, <clears throat> which is just like this one, and also 400 milliseconds. And what I thought was um, <coughs> probably what you got to do is you've got to uh, is that that thing represents some kind of padding, right, between the uh, segments. That was my guess, and it even like it hints at that, you know. Um, Time code of first frame, right? And uh, something about run length and coding, and, and delays, and this and that. And I thought for sure, for sure, it's got to be that I've got to stick stick these things in in between the the bobs. Well, it's a bob itself. Well. <laughs> I tried doing that, in fact, converting this blog to an AVI as I had done with these ones, and inserting it in. First, it wouldn't allow me to insert it to this program. Um, wouldn't allow me to insert it because it had no sound. You see, if you have, if you take a video and don't include any sound with it. I think it will always um, it, it will always show length zero. Let me see. I can easily prove or disprove it. This, by the way, is, is the result that I'm getting now. That's the correct calculation. Uh, there's no graininess at all. There are no lines streaking. There's no fuzziness. And over here at the end. Right, that's perfectly clear. I can zoom in 100%, 150%, and it's still clear. Right, it's not, this doesn't have to be corrected. And it, I'm not, there's no encoding, or I'm not using any tricks. It's just all this does is throw away half the lines. And all this is doing is resizing. Okay. Now, I can save that, but I don't, I don't think I need to, but I'll, I'll save it. Just, I call this a uh, de interlace by mass. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> First, um, uh, the thing about the sound. <clears throat> I went online and I, and I looked and I was expecting to find that that was the reason. Right? And I'm reading through this thing and uh, and they, keep, they kept stressing this thing the most important point. Luckily they kept stressing it wherever it is. Notwithstanding that a DVD has a full file system on it, it is still constraints by what one. Okay, this allows players to be simple-minded and be able to play discs without having to decode fully arbitrary file system structures. First of all, the files must be contiguous. Okay, this is guaranteed by the such and such and so file system. Right? They're contiguous. <laughs> it's so dumb. So there, there's definitely no, you don't have to put any padding in between those files. They're contiguous. 
So, if I want to get the time right, well, if I want to screw up the time, one way to do it would be to convert the format of each segment, right, and then try to glue it together, because um, these things expect uh, a, a sort of continuous file from beginning to end, right, and, and, and no sudden changes of format or anything, right? It has to be simple. I even took a print screen of me doing the crucial step. I don't know, maybe you've never done this before. Uh, the VOB dance. In order to uh, fix the sound problem, what you want to do is just that uh, mux, you know, multiplex all the videos together. And uh, the way to do that is uh, to just copy slash b means binary uh, first video plus second video plus third, fourth, all the way up to eight, and the destination file, whatever, call it that, that is the sum. And uh, that takes a little while, it's quite big. That results in the file that you were just looking at in the uh, virtual dub. It is, uh, in fact, an MPEG program stream file. I could call this .ps if I wanted to, because that's what it is. Okay, uh, no, my system doesn't risk it. Well, it does. It sees it. It's a video, but it doesn't say program stream. Um, and uh, yeah, it's not giving me the media info doohickey. If I change it back to MPEG, just the name, right? Then I get. This, this selection, and you'll see in the header, it'll say MPEG PS somewhere. It should, yeah, here. Yeah. MPEG pro program stream, as opposed to um, TS transmission stream, which is almost the same thing, uh, except this one has, I guess, a little more information. Yeah, for instance, um, you may have noticed that I was able to select different time offsets. If I just run this, okay, that's that's running the whole DVD. All right, this is just file copy. That's how I made this file. <clears throat> like all of the complicated things you thought you had to do, you don't have to do. Uh, to, to make the entire DVD, you use copy. This is seekable, right? So that means that it's our, it's um, the indexing information uh, is in the file in the files already, and to get the indexing correct. You have to regard all of those files as one continuous stream, with no breaks. You can see that oh, it turns volume off. That that's a clear image, right? The reason it's a clear image, and I'm not getting scan lines or anything, is because uh, uh, we stop well. The, media system of my computer knows that this is, a, is something that is an interlaced video. It says so in the header. And so it knows how to play an interlaced video. I don't know what this text stuff is about. Muxing mode. Now that's interesting. Delay relative to video. Run length encoding. Let's 
10 seconds, 10 milliseconds, text blender. I don't know what this stuff means, but somewhere it should say interlace. Oh, here. Okay, that's funny. It, it's saying things that it wasn't saying when they're split up, but I don't think it gives you the same reading. Where were movies, movies? If I look at one of these individually, what does it say? It's similar, but it doesn't have that text thing here. Uh, and look, there's a delay here. Why is there a delay here? Right. I don't know. I didn't put it in. And these delays could be the reason. The reason why uh, the, the audio got screwed up. Because when I would re-encode it, it probably wiped out this delay information. But you don't have to have, you don't need that information at all. Because all, all of these are just one file. According to the article. All the DVD player needs to do is locate the beginning of the file. See, even though there may be multiple log files in a, in a t uh, title set, their contents will be physically contiguous and in sequence on the disk so the player can simply determine where the first sector is located and uh, it can find the rest from there without any reference to any file system. It's just add and subtract. So that solves the audio problem. Now, now to get the, the one, one thing about my I sort of realized right away actually that it, wasn't exactly right. If I want to, to make the internal frame 640 by, <clears throat> sorry, a four thirds aspect, that calculation isn't precise. The one I had, I, I wanted to cut off top and bottom, leave the sides because for some reason. I've found that if I don't leave the sides, it gets messed up and the image isn't sharp. Like this is sharp, if it won't give a sharp image, it suddenly becomes all blurry. This is perfect because it's using both fields, but <laughs> as far as I can tell, there's no software on the market that will do this, that will do this interlacing. The thing that it, that the reason it's a the reason it's a problem is because those lines don't they don't line up vertically. They, they you know if I open up that file. Oh gosh, it takes a while. I can pause this, but I'll explain it as I as this is going along anyway. The, the, or I could open a smaller one. Anyway, doesn't matter. I think that the reason why they're not lined up vertically is because of the fact that a DVD is meant to be played on a physical television device, right? If this is your TV screen, Right. Uh, I'll do this sort of quick. Oh, I, I know. My arrows. Uh, my arrows <laughs> has um, things for drawing boxes. Come on. Uh, so it's either the recorder or or I've lost my no here it is it's the recorder
Okay. If I want to draw a TV set, something like that, and um, push this aside a bit. Oops. Put it there. That was a tab will get me there. Okay. I don't need this. And a little bit further down. I'm just trying to make a picture of what I uh, just from just from inspection. I don't have one. I have a TV. Actually, I could look at it. But there, there are these what they call cells for like a cathode ray tube type uh, monitor. And um, the suppose the we call one set of cells the even cell. Okay. And they're separated like this. Okay, on and on. All the way to the end. We'll call this the end. And then there are the odd cells. Now the odd cells, you might think, would, would come right underneath the even, but they don't. The odds are in between, like this, you see. So in order to make the, them line up on the television screen, you have to make them not line up in the data, right? If I want to have the correct image appear, you know, vertically, I have to have these uh, even and odd scan lines off, you know, slightly to the, well, one in the middle and, and you know, so depending on how you look at it. I don't know, maybe there's one more here. So that they have the same number. Let me just copy this. Copy this. Let's save them. Bottom. Be a oh, what happened? I hit enter for backspace or something. Okay, there we go. Um. So this is a visual a way to visualize what your TV set has and it's trying to display. So the data has to be misaligned. It can't be lined up or else it wouldn't be lined up on your TV. So that's the problem. And that's why you don't want to have at least for for the encoding part, nobody seems to have written uh, a filter thing 
it simply lines them up. You know, move them over however many uh, pixels necessary so that they line up because a computer screen isn't designed this way. Well, it might be designed this way, but um, a computer screen has X's and Y's, right? And if you take a um, a position uh, with a certain X and a certain Y and draw a line to another position with a certain X and a certain Y, like here, okay, let's say this, I take X equals 2, like this is 2, and Y equals 1, right? But that's supposed to be a 2, okay. 2 and 1, and then I go down to, let's see, 1, I'm sorry, that's, this is 1, <clears throat> this is 2, and then I go down to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? That's supposed to be this position, this is 10. Um, x equals 2, y equals 10, wood landing here, and if I drew a line, it's supposed to be straight. But in fact, the, the cell corresponding to, to 10 is here, and the line wouldn't look straight, it would be bent. The TVs don't have x's and y's, it's just scan lines, and all that matters is that the image come, looks clear, and so therefore they this is a much better way to pack the color information together. And you'll notice as well that this uh, shape lends itself to how do I draw that side? Can't draw it very well. Um, hexagonal, like it's a, it can be, it can let's see, let's go there, it? it can be thought of as uh, a bunch of hexagons, right? And that's why the, that's why those searches are always called. Hexagonal searches, right? Because the, these things are better represented by uh, not squares but hexagons. The way things fit together, this doesn't look very good in my picture. Uh, let's get rid of that O. The line goes over the O. This way to this E, and then yeah, then this should be a slash, no O, no slash. Why is it not up? It should be there. This E has gone too far. This one. Right. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are hexagons, and so the Im the image is like a, a collection of these hexagonal figures. And so to do the motion detection and whatnot, um, you, you search. You search in a hexagonal way, right? Along diagonals, up and up and down diagonals, not not left and right and up and down. <clears throat> that all makes sense to me. So what would you do? I have an idea of a way to do it perfectly. 
the first let me show you about uh, fixing that calculation since I finally wrote it out okay. so now we just go to similar it's obvious and you can see the scan lines okay you see the scan lines here is here is the image as it appears on a computer screen but on a television screen these would all be lined up perfectly right because the things to the left are, are actually corresponding with uh, cells that are one half step to the right so they have to be misaligned uh, now first fixing the computation this here image if I add a null filter I can find a sign okay it's 720 by 480 right now going to my and, and then then I go to the cross one and try to figure out uh, how how much to cut off the top and the bottom which I determined to be 22 almost exactly uh, besides it's not very exact for one thing because the you know these these things don't hit the sides in a straight line and that might be one of the reasons why you're not supposed to you shouldn't cut here but anyway I found this to be closer to 25 right here I can see the black come in here it seems gone and if I go up to 26 and move back one I see I still see some image so 26 is too much and I go back sorry go back one again I see black so 25 is definitely the, the sides are 25 right so that cropping changes the image size to this now here's the thing the thing is 720 we'll clear the screen the thing is 720 minus 2 times 25 to death death is my batch file to the arithmetic um, okay now to, if we divide this by the height which I, I want to change this to 480 I wish it would change the stupid default I want this to be 480 but hang on first I have to add this the toss away we have to toss away half the lines because they don't line up there's no other choice and move this up I'll turn this off for a minute that's what we get right now these lines are of the same even or odd so they are vertically lined up although the width is not correct um, the reason the width is not correct is that I'm not sure why that is but again this is feeding into a device right uh, so the width of the data really has nothing to do with the width of the image as it appears on that device it depends on how the device displays the data as it comes in Now I want to resize this to 480. Uh, disable. Okay, now the question is we don't know what to put here. But I'll leave it at 720 for a minute. And that gives us this. Uh, uh, 
Now, since I haven't um, adjusted the width, this is still 25 and 25, and the whole thing adds up to 720. So the current aspect is this. Uh, well, we're not going to get, you know, we're going to get one with integers. So to get a couple of decimal points out, I, I do that. It's 1.39. Now, what we want is we want it to be, we want the internal uh, frame to have a four-thirds aspect, right? And uh, we have 720 minus 2 times 25. Let's say. Um, divided by 480, we would like that to be equal to 640 divided by 480, right? Let's say if we multiplied this by some scaling factor. So if we scaled this, right? Whatever this difference is, is the, is the actual internal width. And um, we can alter that width by multiplying. One way to do it is to multiply this by a scaling factor and then compute uh, what this value x is. So these cancel. That makes it easy. x is 640 divided by 720 minus 2 times 20. I'm going to keep the 2 there. It's important to keep it for reasons that will become obvious. Okay. 640 divided by uh, with some decimal points is that's 0.95 you can add another decimal point Point nine, it's probably a repeating decimal. 0. 0.955. Okay. So x equals 0. 0.95. Like that. Now, <laughs> x distributes it. x is multiplied by this. Right? The presumed final width. Or the internal width. So in particular, uh, this gets multiplied by x, and so does this. Because we're changing the width, the uh, the padding, the black, the black space changes its relative width, right? So it's not necessarily 25 anymore. That's just an approximation. But we can multiply it through. Uh, 720 times 0.9505 two decimal I just say 95, 955 that's uh, 688 okay Six eighty eight, six eighty seven point six. So about six eighty eight and uh, twenty five times point nine five five that gives us uh, twenty three twenty four, right? It's close to twenty four. So the pat the, the amount of padding has decreased. So in fact, um, the correct answer is that uh, in the end we have um, 688 minus 2 times 24, right? The internal size uh, divided by 480 should be one. What should be? Yeah, divided by 480 should be equal to 6. It will be equal to that if we fixed it.
to do that. Six eighty eight two times twenty four divided by four eighty times one hundred one point three three. See? So it's not whatever it was before, six ninety two or something that I had at center. I was off by about four. <clears throat> And th this would be the correct answer. This is the correct answer, and we've included the scaling factor also with the, uh, the amount of padding because the padding shrunk along with the, with the whole width. So, so the, the correct answer is 688 for the external width, and uh, we'll just take it as given that the uh, the black space padding is 24, not. 25 anymore. If, it, if we left this at 25, right, then we would have to add, um, or sorry, subtract uh, two more. We would get 686 or something. Is that right? In any case, 688. This should say 688 by 480 and the internal frame will be a four thirds aspect and we won't get any any snow and I don't see any whereas if I did it the other way with uh, whatever number we had I had before 690 I think I had yeah because more is being subtracted not 960 This one, it's hard for you to tell, but I can see some graininess that doesn't exist when you get the number exactly right. So two steps. One, get the calculation correct. And uh, two, just a regular copy to glue the entire thing together into one file. Just as I did in that picture, I could do it for this one. Uh, I, I did this one, but let's say I want to. I want to do video four. Okay, I'm gonna hit pause on this one. I'll just show you. Uh, I'll, I'll put the files in this empty directory. Now where we go? Movies. So I have a way to move those over there without actually moving them away from there. I want these ones, all of these, and I can put them in there with what's called a hard link. It doesn't uh, actually copy the files, it just makes a reference to them. I've already been using this directory. So now, here, I've got all of them. To completely, to, com to complete the, the film and, and put it all together, it's an empty three, it should really be empty two, is simply a matter of copying in binary mode, first file, plus, Second plus third plus four plus backwards fifth plus six plus seven plus eight and then the destination we'll call it ten D D D four MPG. Okay, I'll have to pause this recording. Well, I'll start it off. It's copying. It's going to take a while. Okay, oh, it just finished. Now, 
here it is, our movie. We can get rid of the other files. Uh, D and what's it called? Oh, Abby. Big long name. Not that. There. It's four. Hmm. Now, why did that come up for? So it's not there anymore. You'll notice that I'll delete all these, but I won't gain anything. Just by another process. What other process? Oh. It's using that. No, it's not open here. Not in here. Oh, probably the current directory for this. See, I still have the same amount of disk space, even though I just deleted eight, you know, gigs. Because those weren't copies, the, those were just um, uh, what they call a hard link. It's just a link, basically like a link. Mm. Uh, big long name. That's cool. <clears throat> so here is the DVD. Like that, I should have put it in here because I'm still working on it. No, oh, that's what came up first. So I'm going to remove this. Here. Now, th this is useless. This is just a kind of waste of time. Um, I don't know how many times it is. It doesn't seem to remember. There used to be a thing called buckets, and the buckets would get full, and these directories would forget <coughs> what their settings are. Well, maybe that's true still. So now this is a DVD file, and it will play exactly as a DVD. I'll turn the volume off. It will play for one hour and 57 minutes. And I didn't use any tool, no mux, muxing or multiplexer or anything like that. Right? I, no tool was required to build this DVD. You don't have to pass this through anything, right? Like you might have thought that um, in, in order to, to get a DVD out, you have to uh, run like Auto Guardian not or something like that. So no, no all you got to do is just copy and append. Now, the problem with this video, of course, is this border. I don't want the border. Similarly for this one, which is why I've done this. Because it's the border is black. If I play it on my system I won't notice the fact that there's a there are bars on the side and I could probably trim it down but I think we've got to keep some but actually the the thing that I was thinking of well, this is the um these are the odd you know, the, well either the odd or the even evens in that picture that I was showing you before right now the evens would be slightly to the left or to the right of this picture. Now, if in the cropping, right, I did, if I did take some 
let's say I take 2 from the X and then encode this entire video, right? And then, uh, then I do the same thing with the evens, but I take 2 off this side, right? Then it might be that the two would would um, coincide the two videos like if I could make don't do the resizing or anything just uh, make two things like this right one uh, ha both having the same frame size right but one missing something on the left and one missing something on the right and if you get the number exactly correct, then they should coincide. And then this thing has a thing called um, unfold fields side by side. Well, fold side by side fields together. You see? Um, like a, what it'll what that will do is if you had uh, <clears throat> two images like this in the same I don't know if it's the same video or a different video or whatever but it'll uh, just sort of weave them together if they lined up perfectly then you would get you would get the DVD quality back no missing scan lines and no like this is going to have some artifacts. When I finally resize this to 720p using this method, that gives me this. And uh, you'll notice some artifacts like um, that uh, you see waves. You'll see waves because there are lines missing. Uh, we need to have something like here, maybe. I saw them before. For the most part, it's perfect. But sometimes... See, this is... To me, that's perfect. Uh, but if it's a... God, it's perfect. Like here, you see? See those lines? Those those aren't supposed to be there, and that's because it's miss it's missing the middle one, the middle scab line that would fill in these. I'll zoom in on that. Somehow, how do I get this to go up? Well, you can see it here. Stupid program. I want to zoom in, but I don't want to. Mm, I'll preview maybe. <laughs> My computer screen is too small. If I make this any bigger, yeah, I can keep it wide to exaggerate it. See, see these waves here. Those waves are there because we're missing uh, missing half the lines. Now, if we could figure out, if one could figure out the uh, exact um, alignment difference, you can do it by just a trial and experiment until it until it suddenly snaps together. And if you can figure out how to do that, merging and folding, then you could have this thing uh, be uh, just like the DVD, the original DVD, without that horrible black box. And in fact, this resizing appears to actually enhance the image. To me, it's nicer than it was. Right, you can see them now.
it's nicer than it was when it was uh, just that little image. Uh, you can see the because there's enough quality, you can see the reflections in the you know in the piano and the lighting here is quite nice. Um, this looks shiny and smooth. I'll go to this this side, uh, and now this is not using any tool, nothing, nothing whatsoever um, for sharpening. Right, yeah, you see them? See all those lines? You can get you can get rid of those lines if you can bring in the, the other fields. Unfortunately, you can't do it in this program unless somebody knows something that I don't know. See, the other thing you can do with the D interlace is instead of throwing away the fields, you can either duplicate, which gives you the same problem as this, or blend. Okay, now that tries to blend the fields together. Instead of putting them together, blend, you know, try to make it blur it up so that you don't you can't tell there's something you know wrong well it looks okay but it's blurry right and you still have this jaggedness because they're not aligned that blending didn't align the fields it's just blurred them a little see how, how this has become not sharp anymore it's not too bad. No, it's pretty good. It's better, better than it was before. But this could be sharp. See, this is a little bit blurry. If I change this back to the star, you'll be able to see the difference when I hit OK. You see how, how much sharper it is? And that's because it's not blending, it's not blurring anything, it's just using them as they are. So that's something I'm going to experiment with and take a, take a little chunk of this and see what the difference is. Do the same um, resizing, although the computation will be different. Let's suppose uh, I decide that I want to try, I want to experiment with four, then I've got to uh, do the 720 calculation differently. It's the internal size is not set, at least, or the external size is not 720 anymore, it's uh, 694, uh, let's say, minus, and uh, we would start out at 24 because I took, if I took uh, um, 4 away, that's 2 times 2. Oh, so this would be uh, 23, right? If I took 2, uh, sorry, 4, that's, this, that's 2 on either side. So uh, uh, instead of 25, it's 23. So that's where I start with. You know, it's closer to already being correct with that. Well, it would be closer. You expect that uh, to get the magic factor. It's, um, it's invert this, right? Take 640. Divided by that, we'll get 1,000. It's closer, it's, it's a 0 0.987. 987 might not affect the frame. It stays at 23. So, uh, and then the width, 
Gives me 685, which is odd, unfortunately. So, since that comes out R, you would have to, now you have to, you have to choose a different height. It doesn't matter, actually, because there's a two steps. Then it goes to 720, and it should maybe become even. Anyway, all that amounts to, uh, I think, the complete and total uh, decomposition of how a DVD uh, works, wh why the interlace lines are the way they are, a proposed solution for, for um, solving the problem and not losing anything, a practical solution that solves a problem with, uh, even though it's a lot of laws in terms of scan lines, uh, in fact, it's that uh, you get a clearer image than if you tried to blend it. And uh, these color ones, I mean, if, if you think that's a, if you got a problem with that image, then there's something wrong with you. I mean, that's a clear, sharp image. Okay. This is not using any any special technique, you know, no special Kodak or nothing. Copy and uh, throw some stuff away and resize. Okay, well, I hope you learned something from that. I did. See you.